Oh. Ooh. All right, in this episode, we're gonna disassemble our three liter SDV6 engine out of our 2016 Discovery 4, which suffered of an engine failure and we bought it like that. Yes, hope you enjoy the video. We already saw that it is the original engine. We can see that on the date stamp code from the crankshaft and it's an OEM crankshaft. So we think this engine failed mainly because of bad service. I don't think it has a snapped crankshaft, but we'll find out in this episode. So this will be sort of an I do car sky engine disassembly video like you know them from Eric, except we're gonna reuse the water pump. That's what I want to do. We're not gonna swap First thing is to remove the crankshaft position sensor so we can get that sealed ring and the trigger wheel off. There it is. Oh. Maybe it had the crankshaft seal leak. Now we can put the engine on the engine stand. <laughs> Oh my god. You want me to help? No. This way you don't get hurt. Look, this is kind of a debacle there. Yeah. So. Honky donkey. Ooh. So. Oh, it's oily. Ooh, where is that oil coming from? Oh, oh no, shit. the block has a. The block has a leak. Yeah, but that means there is a connecting rod sticking out. <laughs> I that knew we had a bad engine. I think this is not a good sign. This is not supposed to be like this. Okay. Of course, we supported it a bit. Oh my God. So taking pictures is most important. So you know in which order these pieces go together. It's gonna come off with um, some sort of a pressure sensor. We're never ever gonna get that thing back together. No take out that fuel line here and we got to plug these if you get anything into those fuel lines you got one of those emails later on to us we're done with the engine rebuild but the engine won't start just, oh my god stupid hoses all over the place on this car i got this one for you i couldn't i have that these. one for you the vacuum crap out it's vacuum crap so vacuum crap is on the wall oh hope that's not gonna drop there we go just drop it. So oh, it's late in the day now. <laughs> and she doesn't want to talk anymore. Okay, because it's the second video we're already doing, okay? For you guys, it was a week. For us, only a coffee. <laughs> yes. In and a piece of cake. Okay, they're really hard to come by. I think we might have some left over from the last I'm engine we built. Side. This was not bolted down, it was just folded up. I'm just really close from snapping off, so you gotta write them down M6 by 16. Oh my god. Okay, the arm valve number one is out. We get lucky on this one too. No, they're gonna snap. What about heat? Well, heat is such a thing because I know there's stuff around it. Oh, so that's when the bad day hammer comes out. Okay, that did it. <laughs> the bad day hammer saved the day. Yeah. Oh, we got lucky. Oh my god, it sounds like that's a 20 year old engine. I already wrote that down. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Here's my box of. Engine disassembly bolts and gaskets, which we have to replace. Second EGR valve out. Valve off here. Oh, what the hell? He calls it big blue. For me, it's big orange. So I used a piece of aluminum to absolutely not damage this. That part for sure is not cheap. Very well. There's lots of sand in this engine, that's for sure. Vera is right, this thing was driven at the beach. Check this out. Amateurs again. It probably had a regular timing belt service and they crapped up something. I think it needs a new one. That one is still good. Okay. See this marked line here? That's an indication that they did not time the engine over the flywheel. They put it into position, then they marked it and they tried not to move the crankshaft. 
So it's possible that the engine just ran rough then afterwards because the timing was not 100% right. Okay, alternator comes out. Oh my God. So even the alternator has sand in it. Let's mark that here. That's off. There we go. I think that's the reason why the air conditioning isn't working, wouldn't you think? I'm a chess. If it continues like this, we may find a good reason why the engine failed. Try to get this out without destroying this piece. And we better take that second line out as well. And there we go. Nice and snug. Good. AC compressor is out. They actually added a real clutch to the compressor. The old compressors on the Discovery 3 ran constantly. There we go. All right, I got the wiring harness out. That's a big step. Yeah. I hang this right here. Okay, second day of our engine disassembly in the I do cars guy style. Oh okay. my god. There are so many armature things on that engine, it's unbelievable. Now, when I took the timing cover off, this bolt was not even tightened, okay? You can see how it's corroded and, and rotten underneath. Amateurs. Yeah, there must have been bolt like four or five, which yeah. wasn't tightened on this engine. And it doesn't do any harm, but it just shows you the quality of these professional Land Rover workshops. This engine had a recent timing belt service. It got only 135 on the clock. And you can see here a clear mark. That's normal, okay? The date stamp on the rollers is 19. Oh. Okay. And now here's the interesting part what I found. Listen, listen here, put your camera here. That doesn't sound good, does not it? No, there's a loose no, rod. No, there is a loose rod. And oh. that rod poked a hole in our engine block. Here's another thing what I found. You know when the timing is set up, that we lock the timing in the flywheel opening and you have to take the starter motor out for that. That's a lot of additional work. And most Land Rover workshop and other workshops just put like a little paint mark right here and you can see this paint mark here. Oh my God. Now let me line up this timing mark. See, I would say it's right here. This is the residual what's left over of it. See this little dot here? Oh yeah, there's a hole. There's yeah. a hole, see it lines up? Pin goes in, Yeah. pin goes in all yeah. the way. This is how they had the timing lined up. You know that we own a timing pin for this engine, okay? Yes. The timing pin, no workshop has that, goes here into the side of the engine block. And it actually defines the position for setting the timing. Now watch that pin now. It doesn't go in. Oh. I rotate it now out of timing backwards, okay? And now suddenly my pin goes in. Oh. Now I put the pin in all the way to the end stop. There, that's the 30 degree after Top that Top center. Top that center. Yeah. And now watch it. Yeah. It's against it. And now look what the timing is set up like. You can see it's off at least by two degrees. The pins don't go in anymore. Go in. Okay. I can measure now how far the timing is off. This is possible for me. I got the technology. I take the pin back out. Pin is out. Now I take my digital protractor and I set it onto my torque wrench here. There, it's zero. And now I know I want to line it up, so I have to watch this paint mark here. And now watch it. It's actually off by four degrees. And the pin goes now in. Pin goes in. Okay. Whoever did this timing on this engine screwed it up by about four degrees by not going through the starter motor aperture, by going through a paint mark. And that's just not precise enough. Is it critical if your timing is four degrees off on the camshafts? Can that maybe shorten the life of an engine? What kind of disadvantages could that have? I don't know, but I know this timing is not adjusted right. Pretty obvious that this was a really bad armature job doing this. I'm gonna have to find out if it was a Land Rover workshop and I'm pretty sure it, it was. No, I think it was not. Come on, Christian. The reason I think it was a Land Rover workshop was 
that most of the plastic riveting around were new. No aftermarket workshop puts in new plastic rivets. They don't even have that. Also, these are definitely OEM parts. This is all Deco and stuff. So to me, it looks like it was done in a Land Rover workshop. Uh, to me, it looks like it was done in a DIY home mechanic workshop who, by someone who didn't know what they were doing. Well, I find out. Okay. So, so can I time. say something now? You talk non-stop. We get at least one email per month. Well, I did it exactly like you did it in your video and the car doesn't start. And then I ask, well, did you lock the flywheel? No, I didn't. That is just enough. I know so much that that is just enough. Well, your car doesn't start, your timing is off. In four weeks, you probably write me, while well, my engine failed. Here, I want to show you the next armature thing here. Now, first of all, there is the clip missing here. Not a big deal, but... It's not oh, nice. It, if we can salvage anything on that engine, it's the timing belts and the tensioners because they are brand new. We're just missing the clip. Yeah? <laughs> I think we should get a new timing belt. I found the root cause why the air conditioning was empty. You're gonna love that. It was mounted here to the compressor. Yes. And there is a slight crack in it. Oh my God. So my assumption is when they did Remove the front timing cover. You know how it is tight to get it out and you yeah. have to bend the hoses away? I think that's when they cracked it. And it probably had only a small crack after the repair. And then it wandered quickly over time and it lost its air conditioning. Amateurs! So, this is definitely an amateur job. I show you another theory. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning and I'm you. already burned out. Yeah. Look at this plug from the oil gallery here above the crankshaft. That's a freeze plug. It's yes. leaking. And it's leaking. So it has been opened before. No. This engine was definitely never open, that's for sure. But why would there be oil on this gallery plug? I think it's leaking off factory. We gotta remove the engine rounds, and because it's a holiday, we can't use the uga duga. Okay, I can put that in. Ooh, I think this might have been a little bit of block. And oh no! We got a hole in the block. Oh no, we have a chest bolt in. Ah, that's not nice. I was still hoping we can salvage this, but that's definitely the end of the block. What I can see here is a connecting rod, and I think that rod doesn't belong here. So this is like a I do car sky video. The sump is broken and the block is broken, so we're gonna need a short block. Just the short block here from Land Rover is 8,500 euros. We're not gonna buy it from a Land Rover. And if you buy some wasted used engine, it's 6,000. So what do you think we're gonna buy? I thought we're going to the UK and it's 3,000. Not for a Gen 2. Oh, not for a Gen 2. You have to get over this now, okay? It's pretty clear if we buy dead discoveries that sooner or later we're gonna run into a real bad one. I'm pretty sure when we looked at the engine, it did not leak that amount of oil. Because it was wrong on the tow track. It, it was the other way around on the tow track. There was no chance for him to load it the way it was on yeah. without starting that engine, the way it was parked in their lot. Okay, so we can take the timing off in this position. Yeah. So you need to lock the timing, even though you know that there is a hole in the short block. This will be the I do car guy version. Yes. At least they got Loctite on this bolt. Oh okay, the Gen 2 engine has an M10 instead of an M8. It's engine block material. Oh my god. Never had. Wait a second. Brand new timing belt. It's gonna get a new one. Careful with it, okay? We don't want to disappoint Eric. It's the softest cloth we have. Let's put it in here. Now we can tackle this water pump. There we go. This is an excellent condition water pump. This looks fantastic. I guess Ford does make some good water pumps. Okay, we're gonna drain the oil or what's left in it. Oh, it's quite a lot. I don't think we have to look for chips. Cracking the exhaust manifolds bolts loose. Oh, 
Oh, the top is also still on here. Yeah, we are distracted. A banjo bolt comes out. Okay. Okay. Oh, it looks so pretty. Okay. Oh no, there are pieces falling off. No, Please it's don't. Just rust. <laughs> Water displacement. So easy to fix that engine if these idiots wouldn't have driven it onto the truck. I think they're still good because with such a severe damage the engine did not run long. My turbochargers, by the way these are Euro boxes and you can get them in various sizes. Oil supply line, so when we have our spare parts in about a year, <laughs> we know where it goes. <laughs> the crankshaft position sensor. Oh, the green box. Yeah. This is a connecting rod. Oh my god. <laughs> The I do car guy always looks at his gaskets. Mm, yeah, it's looking good. Removing the fuel return line is a big improvement on this setup. Yeah. All I got to do is pull them. Okay, you know what that is? Yes, it's an oil separator. It goes into the turbo box. Using my grab my ass plier. There. So plug. look, I have my plugs in a box. We're gonna plug all these. <laughs> yeah remove all the fuel lines now. Ah. Don't want to break an injector. Yes. There we go. There is another fuel line. Which is here right now. Fuel line box. Fuel line box. Okay. We should have used that rack for the water pump. It's much softer. <laughs> okay, and second fuel rack. There you go. It goes in the box. Yes. Oh, all nice. I'll put them in a bag. Goes in here. Oh. The noise dampening away. Noise. There. That's where it needs to be. So that's one, two, three. Don't want to crack anything here. They come out really easy normally on a TDV6. And it looks all good, right? So, sweet. This is number two, number one. And you need to buy new uh, washers. Yes, I need to buy a new engine and new washers. Yes. See this fine sand here? If you get that into here, your engine won't start. So I'm closing all these up really carefully. And what's that? Number four. And there are people who are doing artwork with engine blocks, like a coffee table. Robin's gonna weld me a coffee table out of that block. Check this out, the armatures got Loctite on the board. They have taken a class how not to be an armature. <laughs> what? Okay, now these gotta stay together. Yeah. From amateur trick. <laughs> ah, yeah, so our gutter. Oh my God. Yeah. Maybe we should just break that discovery. Like in the UK, breaking the 2016 discovery. Who needs the doors? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get that vacuum pump out. There we go. There we go. So in the first glance, no chips made it up here. That's really good. If they don't have any dents on the bottom side from a piston hitting, they might still be good. It's, everything is a debacle. The uncracked manifold. Yeah, they are fine. They look like they're fine. Let's have lunch. My camera girl is back. Tripod's kind of boring, okay? It doesn't say, oh my god. <laughs> That is not a oh my god video, that is an amateur's video. Yeah, she took a nap and now it's <laughs> Yes. And some food and a nap. Camshaft's out. Wow, lots of bolts. So now we're going to take all of those over here in exactly the correct order. And we put them on this piece of cardboard and we label them. Mm -hmm. We do intend to reuse the cylinder heads. The block is kind of wasted. Yeah, the block has a hole in it. <laughs> yeah, but Robin said, oh, can I weld this? <laughs> so it's all labeled. 
that the front of the engine. Nothing can go wrong when we put it back together. <laughs> okay, take the timing pins out. Yeah, like that really matters. They are good. We already inspected them. Oh my God. We can at least write green and orange on that piece of cardboard. Okay, can you... Sh this goes also into the box. There we go. Yeah. I'm glad it's good enough for Christian because for me, that is an absolute catastrophe. So at least the cam rollers don't look like they have any kind of a problem. So time lapse is over and well we had some struggle getting out a couple of lifters so we may have also valve damage where the convert broke. Okay so she wants to break the cylinder head bolt so I let her do it okay. Yeah no torque this back. <laughs> what you gotta do is put this further down. Yes, that's the correct one. Yeah. Okay, you gotta grab it at the end of the handle. I yeah. am at the end of yeah, the handle. Yeah, right. That's a workout, isn't it? Yes, now I'm fine. Okay. On that side, at least. Oh, looks all just fine. This side survived. The valve didn't hit anything. Let's do Eric's test. I want to say this side it's good. has still three legs. <laughs> Eric takes these off and then he gives them an inspection. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, oh. and then you gotta throw it away like how you do that with 30% more body weight. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it looks all good. <laughs> it looks undamaged. Oh, that is good. Oh, good. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> That's the one where the lifters were stuck. Yeah. Okay, yeah, mm -hmm. looks good. Okay, we had this filter out before, so we know there are chips in there. Kind of obvious. I want to make sure we're not gonna have too much oil left in the filter housing. Okay, doesn't look like it. Uh oh. And we got ourselves a fuel pump. So there's our box with all the injection stuff. Look at that, there's a seal missing. On the last Gen 2 we had, there was a little bit of foam here in between, for sure. Okay, so sump's also broken. It has a hole. But it's only 200 euros, Christian says. Oh my God. Oh, holy crap. Oh my God. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. <laughs> so we have to open the crank. That's gonna be tough. Yeah. Because there is no second male around. What about me? Uh, you are not a male. Uh, uh, good. Okay, one male is enough. One piece not broken. So let's hope that the oil pump is not a complete failure. Now oh, it's coming off easily. There we go. Okay. Well, it did not drain completely empty. Yeah, and there are no chips. That's at a least. good sign. Okay. So there's already one of those nasty piston clips. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> okay, so this may be a bit of a mess. So, crankshaft snapped or not? No, crankshaft's not snapped. It usually would snap here. This yeah, yeah. is supposed to be here. <laughs> oh my God. And it's not. <laughs> that will make a nice coffee table. The crankshaft is not snapped. So it was a regular bearing failure. And I'm positive if the dude or the dudess who drove it 
would have just stopped the vehicle and shut it off, it would have needed now a few new bearings and that would be it, maybe an oil cooler and some more accessories. But no, instead the vehicle was driven on, started over and over again, accelerated, hit so badly that one of the bearings completely seized up, locked up on the conrad, snapped the conrad open and destroyed the entire engine block. We think this engine broke just before they loaded it onto the tow truck because it had a severe oil leak when we got it from the tow truck and it did not have that when we looked at it. But that's speculation. We bought a damaged engine car so there is nothing to complain. We're going to have to spend approximately six grand more now to fix this as if we would have to spend when we only had to replace the crankshaft and a few bearings. So we'll take out the pistons first. So I'm positive this engine could have been easily saved by just stopping it. But no, we got to drive on and then post a video with the sound on Facebook asking, Hey, did anybody ever have that before? Is that noise normal? No, it's not. It's a broken, failed engine. Shut it off. And I get a lot of emails. Well, I just bought a failed engine to have a cheap discovery for. That is a risk you take and that is not going to be a cheap discovery for. Pushing the pistons through the... Normally I'm really careful pushing the pistons through the gap on the top of the block, but there is not much sense on this one. No. Not many things were talked correctly on that car. <laughs> so that's most likely piston number one. Which is perfectly in good shape. Yeah, look at the bearing. And that's, that's perfect, okay? So there was absolutely no reason to ruin that engine by keep on driving. It's coming, slowly. Yeah. Oops. Oops. So the scratches are from me now. Yeah. Oh, I thought it's a break up by the way you used it. And you I don't think they were amateurs, but it was that Manchester United lost again and they were just not very happy. Uh, I'm kind of burnt out on rebuilds right now <laughs> on the SDV6. First lower bearing. Like, like new. Who scratched up the coffee table? <laughs> The second one is seized, but even that one, you know, did not spin in the housing. Some idiots thought it's okay to drive around with a failed bearing. Third one, you know, it failed, but it did not spin in the block. Got it. And the last one, also nice and loose. Did not spin in the block. Okay, no. there's the crankshaft. In one piece. One more bearing. One more bearing. Got it distorted because of the conrod failure, you know. The conrod failure happens because of poor maintenance and poor oil and high oil dilution. It started knocking 100% for sure and then it was driven for a long time with this knock until the conrod completely seized up and failed. So this could have been prevented 100% for sure by doing proper maintenance and by stopping the engine when it had the first sign of knocking. So this main did not spin, this main did not spin, this main did not spin and this one didn't spin either. The only damage we see is on the inner conrod, mainly this one. This is the one which busted yeah. because it heated up so much that it seized and then it basically yeah. jumped you, apart. We also don't see any damage on the top side of the piston. They absolutely clean. Yeah. Oh. Okay, you want a conrod pin? Yes. It just snapped it apart at the moment where it seized. <laughs> Kind of like a motorcycle piss. Yeah, know. it's gonna go into our living room. <laughs> There's one squirt I'm missing. <laughs> I think that is also gonna be more expensive than we planned on. It's got its first registered oil change with 90,000 kilometers. No severe scratches, okay. Can I see? Just a tiny bit. Yeah, that is nothing. There's also nothing. Yeah. And no chips. There is 0 0.05 and 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is 
Really? So you yeah. think it's it's a loosey goosey pump? Yeah, it got a tens of a millimeter. Look. Oh, also no. here. So the pump may be the problem. Well, the car did not have enough oil changes, okay? And when you don't change your oil, everything in the pump wears. No, no scratches. No, no scratches. The battery is empty. So, what can I say? The pump is not perfect. See, it got scratches on the inside, so it did definitely take some chips around. If we put that pump back in, we get about 500 desktop mechanic comments. And the desktop mechanics may be right. Yeah. <laughs> We do not have a main bearing failure on the crankshaft. Basically, the only severe bearing failure we have is on two connecting rods. So most likely, this was a problem of oil dilution and running 5W30 and poor maintenance. I'm pretty sure this failure mode was recognizable by any driver with some common sense because the engine starts to knock and run loud and it takes probably quite some time before it comes to a severe failure. I would say it could be hours after it develops a rut knock. We can see on the maintenance history that it did not get frequent oil changes and at the end of the day the previous owner paid the price for it. So that's it for this week's episode. At this point, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support. If you have not subscribed, please think about subscribing and... We'll see you next Sunday. And I'm still looking forward for a nice coffee table for my living room.